Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Bring It Down. Let's go take care of Cassia's quest. Your Lordship, Clementia looks away from her data slate. I hope your standard Argonus will be beneficial to your physical and mental state. I understand that the heir to a protectorate must have his hands full. One shouldn't forget about rest. What about the meeting with the navigators of House Arcelio? Clementia immediately focuses on the data slate in her hands. Allow me to report. The esteemed navigators of House Arcelio have taken residence in the guest estate and await a meeting with you. How would you like to receive them? I'm not going to sacrifice profit factor for them. Plus, I feel like my character would be more pragmatic about meetings anyway. A meeting with the navigators is just a formality. No need for any extravagant receptions. Understood, your lordship. Clementia promptly makes a note on her data slate. Would you like to hold this meeting shortly? Yes. Cassia and I are ready for the talks. Then I'll have messengers sent to retrieve the esteemed guests. Oh, there might be blood. Bringing the whole team along. Regent Aranta Orcelio, esteemed delegation. The Rogue Trader and the Von Valancius Protectorate welcome you. Come this way, please. I like the purple and white that their guards have. Cool color scheme, though not very effective in most scenarios, if you're trying to be camouflaged. But I understand that they're an honor guard, so that's not really relevant. The esteemed representatives of the Navis Nobolite have arrived at the Rogue Trader's Court, the region of the Great House Orcelio, Aranto Orcelio. His companions, Lady Glyceria Orcelio, Navigator Lesso Simon Orcelio, his intended bride, Lady Navigator Alexandrina Orcelio, Lady Navigator Alina Hateria Orcelio, and Navigator. Oh. Too many names. A tall, wizened old man proudly stares at you with milky, unblinking eyes. Luskin sways with his every move as if the navigator's flesh is detached from his bones. An unsightly hole mars the region's face, where his nose should be, and the old man's skull is covered with spiky growths. Rogue Trader. The region's sagging lips twist in a condescending sneer. We hope the Von Valancis Protectorate finds its bearing soon. You sound us with functions every bit as grand as those of your peers. I'm sorry, but Profit Factor is a finite resource, so... Get bent, buddy. And yet, this is not why we are here. Our grace is obliged to note how much the rogue trader has done for House Orcelio by protecting its beloved child. We waited for many turns to behold her radiant visage. The region shifts his unblinking gaze to Cassia. Come now, child. There's much we need to discuss. I... Cassia steps forward, but then stops and looks at you. Nod wordlessly. She can speak for herself. Cassia smiles faintly and addresses the regent. Esteemed regent, 
It pleases me to see the gleaming sheen of gold and turquoise above your brow. It is thanks to the efforts of the rogue trader that I stand here today, and there is so much I want to tell you. But what is it you desire to hear most? We know what happened at the station, child. Your connection to the Atlas has grown so strong, we felt the turmoil in your soul, and the events that transpired have shaken us. House Arcelio is deeply grateful to the rogue trader for the destruction of the saboteurs, and we are willing to reciprocate such a magnanimous uh, gesture. We trust that a treaty of friendship and alliance underpinned by the transfer of several artifacts of exceeding rarity will suffice. Now come, child. It is time we depart for your new home, so that we may finish what we started. You are correct. It is time for me to do my duty to the house. Cassia gives you an uncertain look, as if seeking your approval. Cassia, I'd be honored if you decided to stay. Unthinkable. Don't shoot! House Orcelio is not involved in the attack! Down with Tisiphone's tyranny! Kill the girl! I think Alina was the one navigator I didn't get the name read in time. I'm going to skip this part, because I think uh, it got bugged out. So she's injured from the get-go. I have an idea. Ah, uh, out of range. Never mind. I don't have line of sight on that guy either. Son of a gun. I'll see to it personally. It's as good as done. Well, that was unfortunate. Am I getting paid for this? Don't get too cocky. I can do that with the right incentive. You've got a problem, I've got a price. Right, she has a ton of stuff that I have not used in a long time. Yeah, I want to get this off immediately. Oh. 
probably use that beforehand. That works for me. Let's make some opportunities. I'll make it happen. But of course, Lord Captain. Naturally. I'm done with this one. Let's see to it. I right, start with the buffs. Moving out! I must not falter. Oh, my ears are ringing. Onward! Oh. <gasps> In. Get me a target. Sure. At your back and call. Victory is imminent. At your beck and call. Indeed. All right. Uh, same thing. We want to use press the advantage. Master tactician empowers their next attack to deal four percent additional damage for every stack of tactical advantage they have, which is currently what thirty-two. Yeah. All right. Let me get behind that. Isn't this a job for the serves? You can use that twice per turn. Just like so. If I may. Isn't this a job for the serfs? And have Ablard finish off this guy. It will be done. Nice. It's hmm. a little unfortunate. In the name of house or center, I shall prevail. Oh wow, so scorn the pain. Didn't anticipate that she'd use Lilith's stare with orchestrated firestorm. Also cool that our non party allies, or NPC allies, also get to uh, use what's it called? Orchestrated firestorm. I'm not accustomed to being ordered as duty demands. I won't object to it. Someone's death wish is mine to grant. This is very Let's much overkill for this guy, but... By golly, it's going to be pretty. 
266 to 281, not including crit. 270. I just walk away. I always keep my options open. Lady Navigator, Alina. Mercy. The Lady Navigator covers her face with her disfigured scaly hands, each with an extra finger and conjoined phalangeal bones. Her clothes are covered in blood, mostly that of your servants, and several unexploded bolts are sticking out of her chest plate. Rogue Trader. Whether on purpose or out of ignorance, you're harboring a monster that is cunningly pretending to be an innocent maid. Spare me. And I, Elena Hateria Arcelio, will swear to tell you the whole truth about the madness that is devouring House Arcelio like a malignant tumor. Do not let the Regent deceive you with honeyed lies lest the cursed child, child ruin your protectorate as well. You see rage and despair in the Lady Navigator's face, but neither is directed at you. No, summer execution I think is more in line with my character. I sentence you to death for your crimes against a rogue trader and Lady Navigator Cassia. Any last words? Persephone's heir be darned. I know that House Orcelia will cast off the Tyrant Shackle someday, though not here and now. Others will come after me, and may our enemies tremble. Rogue Trader. House Orcelia humbly asks for your lenience and forgiveness. We cannot even imagine these vile rats could be scurrying among our ranks. As for them sneaking into the rogue trader's palace and staging an unthinkable crime, God Emperor be our witness. The accursed renegades seek to spark a feud between our houses. Allow us to offer you compensation worthy of a rogue trader, as a gesture of friendship and an apology for any unpleasantness. You set aside as your people, these so called renegades attacked. How is that not treason? A ridiculous claim. In the heat of battle, your servants would not have paused to consider who is truly to blame. We would have been cut down next to the traitors if we'd so much as reached for our weapons. That's probably true. That's a good point. I'm ready to tell you everything we know so that this misunderstanding can be remedied as quickly as possible. Tell me more about the renegades. They are madmen who seek to destroy the centuries old traditions of our great house. So carefully nurtured by the previous Novator Tisiphone Orcelio. They deem the century of her rule a tyranny, and our most sacred relic a curse that must be destroyed. Fools. If the Atlas were to be destroyed, the whole of House Orcelio would follow it into oblivion. Why do the Renegades seek to destroy the House's relic? They dread her power, for only a Novator can fully grasp the mysteries and harness the power of the Starway Atlas. What the Renegades call a leash, we call a guiding star. Why are people trying to kill Lady Cassia? Everyone in the house knows the child is the keeper of the one true Starway Atlas, which once belonged to our great novator Tisiphone Orcelio. The ungrateful wretches secretly hated her grace, and when Tisiphone abdicated her responsibilities and set off her parts unknown, they staged a revolt to destroy her successor. Does Cassia really carry Tisiphone's Atlas? We believe it with all our heart. The Novator spent many cycles in the world where the child was born. It is said that everyone who witnessed the miracle of her birth simultaneously departed for a destination known only to the Novator. Tisiphone gave the order and followed them soon after, leaving her precious gift, the Atlas, to Cassia and therefore marking her as her successor. It looks like House Rosselio has fallen on hard times. The Regent stays silent and then replies, To call your statement false would be a lie. 
For many years, we managed to maintain the fragile balance within our house. But then, the Novator's departure shook the faith of many. The treasury is empty, the navigators are scattered, the warp routes are scrambled, and many of our allies cannot be reached. Which is why it is so important to complete the child's education. It is Cassia's duty to take Tisiphone's place and lead the house to prosperity. Such is her great destiny. What do you know about Cassia's unbridled power? A special gift for a special child. She was born with it and grew up under its influence. The instability sometimes hampered her education, but we learned to prevent most outbursts. As long as the child remains calm and remains in seclusion, the powers cannot take hold of her mind. I think I have heard enough. Would be honored to hear your thoughts on the matter. Yeah, we don't need material goods. We just need faith in the God Emperor, right? Yeah, allow me to decline the compensation. House Arcelio needs its resources now more than ever. The Regent acknowledges your words with a nod and waits for you to continue. I will dismiss the charges against House Orcelio for what transpired. It pleases us to know that the enemy's schemes failed to harm relations between our dynasties. But tell us, what future awaits House Orcelio and the Von Valancey's Protectorate? Yeah, we need navigators. Even if they're not the most powerful navigator house currently. They may rebuild, especially with our help, so... Let us sign a treaty of friendship and alliance between our dynasties. Oh sweet, Navigator's Insight. We need that, so we can continue exploring the other systems. Uh, with great pleasure. Our emissary will contact yours and deliver the scrolls for your signature and seal. May the Emperor bless this new alliance. I wish to help House Orcelio solve their current problems. Hmm. Regent sagging skin quivers when he sighs. It would be highly disrespectful, sorry, disrespectful of us to refuse the aid of a rogue trader. We, Aranta Orcelio, do hereby accept your offer. If you will allow, we shall discuss the details later. What about an exchange of culture and technology? Theodora von Valantius was a very open-minded woman, but sagacious Tisiphone did not support many of her endeavors, and neither should we. We are afraid House Orcelia will have to refuse the rogue trader's offer. I would like to discuss the Lady Navigator's future now. As we said earlier, the child must return to the fold of her house. We hope you will be gracious enough to acquiesce. There are traitors in your midst. Would the Lady Navigator not be safer under my protection? There's a pregnant pause. The Regent stares at you as if trying to peer through the skin, muscle and bone, and see the darkest corners of your heart. You are not wrong, Rogue Trader. If you're willing to take care of the child while we deal with our problem, so be it. Though House Orcelio may have suffered the pain of a schism, only we can protect the child from our brethren and lead her along the paths of enlightenment to the Novator's throne. So we do have incentive to return to Footfall. Because I also wanted to go back there and see about building up our profit factor.
Your lordship. The servant's docked vocal cords were recently replaced with a silver-plated Vox implant. Is that because we didn't condone her removing the vocal cords of her servants? If so, that's pretty cool. It is so fortunate you have come. I admit I was seeking you out myself. After the events on Dargonus, it felt like an anthracite gray mantle had dropped on my shoulders. I spent a long time thinking about our very first meeting and what happened next. I cannot wait to shake off this dreary color. You are the only one who I trust to hear this confession. The thought of being Nova Tour both frightens and sickens me. How can I manage an entire house if I cannot even control my powers? I... I am just grateful to you for always being close and guiding me to the right path. Thank you, Rogue Trader. It will be an honor to keep guiding your vessel through the Sea of Souls until you decide otherwise. I hope you're feeling a little safer now that Alino Orselio has been executed. On the contrary, Lord Captain. The mere thought of what happened tightens a grey-blue slip noose around my throat. To realize, again and again, how fervently your subjects hate you. I am sorry, Lord Captain. I should not have darkened your colors with my own struggles. You feel a suffocating lump in your throat. Alarmed. Cassia passes a palm over your shoulder, as if shaking off some ash that settled there. You feel some relief. I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation. Alright, well let's head north. Galactic North. I can jump straight there from here. Let's do that. I've seen this before, so we'll just take option one again. Alright, we're at uh, Leto Revum Maledicta. Gonna grab that. It's seven plasteel, no reason not to grab it. Yeah, we don't have a lot of provisions. We'll grab that too. I'm not going to grab that one though. Alright, a small planet gently wrapped in amber forest greets you with a ruby-colored dawn. Basil von Dem Klirch, the local governor, gives the rogue trader a warm welcome. After several glasses of Damascene, the sweltering ruler asks if Donald von Valancius would like to keep him company during the upcoming hunt. Accept the offer. After several hours of riding the local peculiar animals, you make camp in the middle of a golden forest. Basil von Dem Klirch points at the sky. A flat disk rises over the horizon, constantly morphing its color and shape. The forest grows silent and empty. You can no longer hear the singing of birds or even the rustle of wind. The governor nods with satisfaction. A few shapes step into the clearing. Their bodies are twisted by an unknown phenomenon, and you watch the freaks with astonishment as they begin to dance to the throaty cackling of their brethren, turning the bony growths and pulsating flesh of their scaly hands toward the unnatural thing in the sky. 
Yeah. Order your men to eliminate the mutants. Having armed themselves with flamers and chain swords, your party cleared out several acres of nearby forest. The scouts report destroying several villages inhabited by heretical entities. Maisel von dem Klerch excitedly explains that the creatures you saw are the children of the great king of distortion. It is he who is the true god and patron of these fertile grounds. Once every cycle his chariot shines its light upon the world and bestows transformations upon his most ardent followers. The rogue traitor may become one of his heralds. Yeah, execute the governor on the spot. The governor's head separates from his neck with a distinctive squelch. Black and brown blood seeps into the soil beneath his corpulent body and is immediately transformed into a writhing tangle of worms that burrow deep into the ground with unnatural speed. We return to the ship pondering what to do with the world, and more importantly, what to do with the King of Distortion. Order that the crew charted course to the anomaly known as the King of Distortion. The senior officers observe suspicious activity emanating from the twisted celestial body at the heart of the system. The chaplain advises you to get ready for a potential encounter with the spawn of the arch enemy, so it may be wise to reconsider unless you have holy relics, sacred wards, or blessed effigies of the emperor. A flame with a plethora of colors, the distorted celestial disc trembles slightly beyond the endless windows on the captain's bridge as the rogue trader's ship approaches its center. An otherworldly voice, cold and enveloping, enters your mind. What could this puny wretch possibly offer a king? The officers on the bridge look around, perplexed. Their eyes are full of terror and confusion. Many clutch their heads and let out long howls of pain. Some empty their stomachs. But most, pale and exhausted though they are, have joined the Lord Captain in resisting the Entity's influence. Command the Entity to release the minds of the Amber Worlders from its grip. The King's mocking laughter rings in your ears, and a deep red trickle runs slowly from your nose and over your lips leaving an aftertaste of salt and metal. Okay, so if we had holy relics in our cargo, we could take this option. But we have cannons, so attack the entity with every cannon on board. How dare you disturb the king with trifles? The entity is furious. You feel a gust of invisible wind blow a thousand blades right through your ship. Officers are collapsing at your feet, choking, and hundreds of casualties are being reported from every deck. A resonant silence descends on the ship, and a bright flash stuns you for what could be any length of time. So it sent us to another system. All the way back here. Well, what the heck? Sorry, we have plenty of the navigators in sight, and I don't think we have that many more systems to explore anyway. Your heresy ends here. psychic abilities to use. God Emperor, move through me. Be the fire in my heart. At your beck and call. I am ready for whatever comes.
beautiful day. Don't get too cocky. Am I getting paid for this? I'll try that again. I venerate you, machine spirits. This battlefield air is good for my lungs. I should use this first. Oh well. I'll put myself in a pretty poor position. As good as done. As the Emperor commands, I act. I feel the power surging. For the throne, the Inquisition sends their regards. Right, how do I want to do this? No matter the cost! A tactically sound approach. It will be done. Consider this a taste of what's to come.
Alright, I'll gladly take that. Tell me and it is done. I can do that with the right in oh, I want a medal for that one. Doubt is for the weak. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, there was a time where she was doing the most damage on the team, but I know Heinrichs is really coming to his own. Don't get too cocky. <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. Who if not me? I won't object to it. Uh, we do provocation, or let's do this instead. I won't object to it. Be gone. The casual 226 damage. Not a big deal. Naturally. Your reckoning is due. But of course, Captain. Alright, maybe that wasn't worth it. I won't object to it. It's not gonna do anything. I could use this though. Ah, good enough. As the Emperor commands, I act. Faith without deeds is worthless. Power resides in the will of the righteous. Each strike is a prayer. And we leveled up. Fantastic. That's one way to do Let's it. Let's see to it. Everyone, step aside. I'll brush this off. Rise to the top or get left in the dust. Focus, Van Kalox. Focus.
Alright, so I'm guessing that the King of Distortion is still going to be here. I get Holy Relics, but we do have a dungeon over here. So we'll check that out next time. Maybe find some holy relics. And see if we can revisit the King of Distortion and beat him with the power of prayer. But for now, I'm going to call it here. And again, next time we'll level up first thing and then we'll check out the dungeon and potentially reconfront the King of Distortion. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.